Hi, it's Joe Mazumdar of Exploration Insights. I'm in Toronto for the PDAC version of the Metals Investment Forum. And with me right now is Executive of Business Development, uh, Andrew Strickland of Blackstone Minerals. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Blackstone Minerals, uh, nickel play in a, in, in, a, in a metal right now that is critical and people have been forecasting much growth in the nickel market because of uh, electric vehicle uh, production. We're in a bit of a quandary on the nickel market now. It was down 45%, but I take your point that from some highs. So uh, how is Blackstone managing itself uh, right now under the current sentiment of nickel, maybe not the reality? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, I think the, most, the main issue that people have is the fact that while the nickel price was high, um, what's happened in the last few years is operating costs have tracked up typically around the world. So as a result, a lot of projects which historically at these sorts of prices would have made good money uh, are now sub-economic. Uh, part of the benefit of our project being based in Vietnam is the fact that we are lowest quartile cost producer for our, for our final product. So what that means is we have access to the hydropower, um, which is six to 10 cents a kilowatt hour, um, very low cost to labor. Um, our flow sheet itself is designed to try and keep costs down. So it gives us an overall, um, you know, all in sustaining cost of about $13,000 a ton of nickel, which is still far beneath the current um, market price for nickel, which makes us very economic and just gives us great leverage as the price goes, you know, it's potentially going to go up again in the future. I think what we also look to do is you've got Indonesia, um, we can't, no one can just compete with Indonesia on price alone. You know, they have the ability to put out the tonnages and the volumes that makes it very hard for people to compete. We are looking to differentiate ourselves by being you know, the, the low carbon, the highest ESG product. I'm not suggesting that um, all Indonesian supply is high carbon and high ESG, but not all of it is low. And I think the issue is, how do we make sure that we make a product which is um, you know, really focusing on keeping the cost down, ESG high and carbon down as well. And that's really how we want to differentiate ourselves and keep a, a project viable for the long term. So uh, recently in 2024, you announced a, a memorandum of understanding with two uh, Korean partners. How does that help in terms of what you're planning between uh, production from uh, from the mines in, uh, in in Vietnam and the refinery. Yeah, it's a good question. We um, the mine in Vietnam has always been planned to supply roughly fifty percent of the nickel to our refinery. The refinery is planned to produce about uh, forty six thousand tons per annum nickel nickel in Pekan, um, roughly fifty percent from our mine. That means we need to find you know. 20, 23,000 tonnes of nickel per year. Um, we recently made investments um, into a couple of um, Manitoban mines and by the um, this JV, potential JV partner coming in, they could bring additional nickel sources from their mines in um, Zambia and also in um, Philippines. Tanzania. So Tanzania, yeah. sorry, in, in Tanzania and the Philippines. Yeah. Um, and in and in bringing that in, that gives us the optionality to, to consider where is the best feed source for us at what at a given time. Um, what is the most development ready asset and we can work together with them to help basically remove any outstanding nickel security uh, risk from our project. Uh, we bring a lot more mining and project development background that they don't have, but then they bring to us um, really strong supply chain links into South Korea, as well as um, a bigger balance sheet to help us with the funding of this project. Right, and, and uh, Koreans might attract financing from Korea as well for the project. That's correct, and Korean, Korean financing from um, export credit agencies, for example, is definitely something they're going to help us to bring to the project. Okay, let's talk about that Manitoba project. So you were talking about getting, uh, in, in your presentation, about getting a switch sweet spot of certain grade uh, and tonnages into the portfolio to feed uh, uh, the Tacoa refinery. Yeah. Um, so we had a bit of a, a, a rough metric that we needed to have at least 10,000 tons per annum nickel to be delivered from the mine for 10 years as a minimum, right? That basically, that, that's the, the play zone. We need to get into that. But also, we recognize that we have a relatively large project with large capital demand. So we can't be looking at some of the very low grade, very bulk tonnage mines, which also need multi-billion dollars to get into production. So we're looking at those mines, which kind of sit between a 0.3% nickel to 1% nickel, um, with circa sort of maybe 50 to 200 million tons of resources for you know around that 500 to a million tons of nickel contained. Um, in that grade, you kind of you, you don't have the same recovery issues that you may have at the very low grade with the non-sulfide nickel. 
you don't have excellent recoveries that you do for the very high grade massive sulfides, but nor do you have the high operating costs. You can you can get the orders of um, magnitude for your mining and your processing and bring those costs down into the first quarter. Okay. So right now, Blackstone, I've signed this MOU. You've got a lot of things in the air right now. Uh, I guess, do they start getting resolved once you resolve this, uh, your, your, your future partnerships? That's exactly it. We've now kind of got all the moving pieces in play that we need. We've got nickel security for multiple decades, potentially for our refinery. So we now need to you know, work, with our, um, work through the process for identifying and securing our joint venture partner. Um, the recent MOU was one group which is part of that process. It is a competitive process. Uh, we've got you know, multiple parties currently in our data room looking at our project to come in as a strategic. We're looking at some potential local Vietnamese partners, some strategic international partners as well. Once we've found that partner, we'll really know what their preferred strategy is and whether we want to go um, focusing in Vietnam first and looking at maybe an MHP feed rather than using all nickel um, concentrates, or do we want to focus on concentrates and bring more in from international. So that would be part of our strategy. But Blackstone feels that we have all the pieces in play that we need now to be able to execute that strategy um, once we have the partner secured. All right. Well, thanks for that. That's it for me, uh, Joe Mazumdar, Exploration Insights at the PDAC edition of the Metals Investment Forum. And with me right now was Andrew Strickland, uh, Executive Business Development with Blackstone Minerals that's advancing the Tacoa project in Vietnam. Thank you very much for joining us.